King and I are outside Building 15 now, uh, Wisteria Hall. Building 15 is one of the most beautiful buildings we have on this grounds of the psychiatric center. Although the architecture is very beautiful, it's all of the flowers that grow along the outside of the building. And that's how the building actually got its name, Wisteria Hall. Wisteria is a type of flower which for many years grew on the outsides of this building. Wisteria Hall. But we had a nickname for the building. Many of the locals referred to the buildings as Hysteria Hall. Hysteria Hall. That's because the building was so noisy. When I was working down at the community store, we used to sit on the loading dock there and listen to all the noise coming out of the buildings. And, uh, you know, for a teenager, it was pretty scary. We always wondered what, uh, what was going on here. But uh, this building behind us, Building 15, was the building which uh, the isolation wards and where some of the most difficult to manage patients lived. King, you worked here. For God, I only lasted here about five or six months. I started uh, nurses training and then when I dropped out, I was put here on the worst ward, 62, which was uh, unofficially known as the violent ward, or this was the security building. The worst patients of the hospital, I think, were right here. It have been some divine providence or act of heaven, but all of a sudden, one morning I heard, Peddler, you're getting transferred to 93. Oh, what a gift that was. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Go in one building over. Uh, Greg Zanicki worked in this building. I remember him telling a story that uh, when he was a young kid, his first walking on the job, uh, he was dressed in all neat in a, in a tie and a shirt, white shirt, black tie. Right. And his... Um, and his uh, supervisor came up and grabbed the tie and started yanking on it and said, see, this could be a patient doing that's this. Right, that's Next right. time you wear a clip-on tie. A uh, clip-on, yes, yeah. right, right, yes. Well, actually, it got to the point that nobody wore ties in the ward. Just open collar shirt, we could get away with it. Yeah. Back then, they didn't have air conditioning. No, they didn't have air conditioning in 93 or here. Maybe they had it later on here, but it was rough. What? Those muggy nights, oh boy. When was that uh, Building 15 originally constructed? <clears throat> I, I think it was constructed about the same time 93 was. Uh, they started building 15, back of us, in around 1939. Uh, it was part of the w Roosevelt's, FDR's uh, WPA project, and along with 93. The WPA project was, uh, they we were going through the Great Depression at that time, and so the government wanted to put people to work, right. so they established all these public works projects. Uh, right, that's right, yes. It wasn't right. like the Getting grand, people employed and all that, yeah. The Tennessee Valley Authority, that's when they were in their And heyday. the CCC camps. Yeah, yeah. Conservation right. Corps. Conservation right. Corps, yes. Right. This building, Building 15, is one of the buildings that are in some of the best condition because it was built to be so secure. Uh, the, it's relatively from all outwardly appearances in relatively good shape, maybe even has a chance of being restored if the will and the funding is there. I found a combination of music and words Makes a backdrop soundtrack to my work It all comes together sometimes Making perfectly good sense when you disregard the logic of making a profit Now before I drift off to sleep I try to say a prayer I'm grateful for today And all the love in my life I have And I sure could use some Restoration. I remember Lucy Weiner told us that uh, when she was here, she received Thorazine and she felt like it was like wearing a lead uh, apron all the time. It just didn't feel like moving and that's how you got that Thorazine <coughs> long shuffle. long periods and heavy doses, they took on the... Uh the Parkinson syndrome, involuntary movements. Yeah. Stoop forward, walking stoop forward, drooling. Yes, that so was. So I saw a lot of that. That was the Thorazine shuffle. We used to call it. It was like the drooping forward, the shuffling of the uh, of the legs, and then drooling. Yeah. Stoop forward, drooling, a tremoring of the tongue, which I witnessed. 
And it was a shame to see that because I hear it's uh, irreversible. As time went on, this was all, this was used after other therapies have failed. Well, well, it wasn't like a first step. It was it was in order before someone came to an institution such as this, especially later on in the 70s and the 80s, uh, when I worked here, is that other steps were taken first. First, it was usually like a group home setting, and, and there was a series of escalations. <laughs> and when you came here, you were on a different level, and then after a while, if certain therapies didn't work, the therapies Thank became you. more aggressive. I think that word uh, with the Parkinson's syndrome was, and even Newsday had an article about it at the state hospital. So the, uh, the word is called tardive dyskinesia. Tardive dyskinesia? Yeah, T-A-R-D-I-V-E, dyskinesia. Okay. Dys, D-Y-S, something, or kinesia. Kinesia, and what does that mean? Kinetic muscle movement? Movement. Tardive, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So tardive dyskinesia was the word that I got from Newsday. Now now you say it, it makes sense because it's kind of like a retarding, a uh, 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 lagging behind of the uh, locomotive right, right, skills. Right, right, yes. Yeah. And, and also Disconnection. this, you know, involuntary, this kind of thing here. And in the facial too. Do you remember, I remember, I always, they were described to me as catatonic schizophrenics, but, but certain patients, they were like stuck in like these poses. They would have like one hand up in the air. Well, they call it catatonic. Catatonic. Yeah. But you know, uh, I saw that in the 50s and the early 60s, <clears throat> but as years went on, I didn't see any of that. I think that was better managed through drug therapy. I think drug therapy, because I didn't see it in the 80s and 90s at all. Yeah. Where yeah. a patient would be like a statue for yeah. hours, not moving. It was odd, a weird, uh, you know. I remember the first time I saw it, I, uh, later on I was, I was studying psychiatry, psychology, and I would reflect back on my time working here, and then I could start, as I started to learn the different diseases, I started to say, oh yeah, that's what Joe had, that's what so-and-so had. You know, it gave you a little bit more insight into what well, was going on. let me tell you, on. this building was really wild, though, uh, back in the late 50s when I was here. A lot of yelling, banging around, screaming, and fighting, and uh, you know, that kind of thing. That's what I was telling King before about, uh, about how we would sit on the dock and listen to it. It was just, it was deafening. A, a couple of things is number one is that all the buildings, they were the inside wards, a lot of them, especially the older ones, they had plaster walls and so everything echoed. If you drop something, it echoed and so everything was amplified and just right. having, you know, patients who are very mentally ill. The people who lived in this ward, in this building, were very, very ill or very difficult to manage, usually both of those things. And there was an old saying about working here, unofficial saying, keep you back to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want anybody coming around the back of you, you know? I think that's uh, kind of good advice for school board members as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because you don't have anybody watching your back, right? <laughs> oh, I'm not even going to go there, King. Time to, what do you think? Well, what would it say? We walk over to the firehouse over there? I think so. I think it'd be a great idea. All right, great. Let's take a walk. That's another place I lived for about a year. Oh, story for another... My home. Story Getting for another park bench. A little nostalgia here.